as we saw in Charlottesville um, and what was depicted very clearly is there is a resurgence of right-wing extremist groups, the alt-right, spreading through in American societies. And we saw through the elections of um, the presidential elections and since then, the last year, there's been a 65% increase in anti-Semitic incidents just in America. Our audit was released a month ago and we are really concerned, including uh, extremist issues on campuses, universities, K-12 schools, where we're seeing swastikas, we're seeing bullying of Jewish students, and so both incidents and attitudes all show that there is a real concern about right-wing extremism spreading through America. And what do you define as the source? Where is this coming from? It's coming from all corners. Um, there's an issue of globalization that's concerning people. There's a lot of fear about loss of jobs, so economic instability. There's issues of nationalism and patriotism. These are global issues, by the way. It's not unique to America. Issue of migrants, and you saw the immigration ban. Fears of people coming in and taking over your jobs. America is not immune to that either, and these are, again, global issues. Technology and social media giving a platform to hate and, and fear in a way that was unprecedented. So again, this is not unique to America, but we definitely see it happening on Facebook, on social media, where these hateful uh, ideas are being exaggerated in ways beyond ever before. And what could be done? Well, we at the ideal feel that still the result has to be awareness, has to be education, working with our legislators, working with our local communities, being in schools from the kindergarten to 12th grade, teaching them about otherism, about the idea of hate and bias and discrimination, but at the same time using our voice in the loudest way we can to say these are alarm bells are going off. And you and your uh, role in ADL see the global picture. It's much worse in Europe, it's worse in other places. Europe is really disconcerting because in Europe what we see is from the, the problems from the right, from the left, and from Islamic extremism. So you really have all three and you cannot take your eyes off any of them. From the left what you see is issues like we're seeing in Iceland where the legislature now has before it a rule to ban circumcision. And if Iceland passes it as a test case, Denmark is next. Denmark has a small Jewish community of 8,000. And to ban such a fundamental religious uh, right of passage passage means the end of Jewish life in those countries and this could really be a tipping point for the rest of Europe. Does the the Holocaust trauma does that assist in the fight of anti against anti-semitism or is that dissolved? No, I think it assists still. I think when you talk to governments today in Europe they know that they have a responsibility in making sure that the demagog demagoguery does not go unchecked. So the problem in Europe right now is not necessarily governments but it is um, kind of more uh, grounds up issues that are swelling based on fear, based on really manipulating populist uh, political ideas, based on the migrant situation, and they're using that as an excuse, extremist groups are using it as an excuse to propel themselves into the political scene. So in Austria now, you have a political party that's part of the coalition that has neo-Nazi backgrounds, but its main messaging is anti-migrant, is Islamophobic, but we know that is not separable from anti-Semitism. The two go hand in hand. How do you see what we are seeing now in Poland. Uh, there was uh, the legislation, there were explanations. No, this is just, uh, you know, fixing the facts regarding the Germans. But then came more statements and more statements and then a few more this week as well. This is exactly what I was referring to as populism. The Polish government understands very well the, the mess they have stepped into. We at the ADL have recognized for now over 20 years that the term Polish death camp is in fact inaccurate. But when you ban speech, and when you get into this business of saying what is allowed and what is not allowed to be discussed, you are giving in to the worst of the worst in your society, which are nationalist tendencies who want to use this avenue to say what is us and what is them and what is otherism. And that's what they've now stepped into and they're, it's just digging a hole and they're not coming out of it.